Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the top 5 army control tips and tricks to help improve your micro in Age of Empires 2. For this video I'm going to be covering pretty advanced tricks that a lot of you guys might not know so it should be pretty useful for beginner players but it should also be useful for advanced players as well. So the thing is army control is a very essential part to getting good at AV2 and it's one of the most difficult concepts to understand let alone master. The idea is that we make small movements and little tricks that can make a massive impact on the kind of trades that we take throughout a game. Furthermore if we have apply these tricks to every fight we take, the chances that we'll have success in that particular game go up because we're implementing them multiple times a game and not just once or twice here and there. Before I get started though, I will just mention that I made a video recently on how to dodge ballistics. So I will be mentioning that a lot in this video, but not actually covering how to do it. If you guys don't know anything about that, definitely look for that video on my channel. I might even link it in the description below. So without further ado, let's hop in and take a look at the list. All right, starting off at number five, I've got a very nice tip for you in late game. And this is actually very applicable in pretty much every single late game that you have a big powerhouse late game gold unit, whether it's Arbalest, Heavy Cab Archer, Mangadai, whatever it may be. Basically, when you wanna take engagements against other armies, the way you wanna go about it is spread your units to reduce overkill. I first have to cover what overkill is real quick. Basically, overkill is the idea that if you have 40 range units shooting at one unit from the enemy, let's say at one militia, only the first like eight arrows will matter to kill the militia and the next 32 that are shot will just land on the ground because the unit is already dead. However, you already shot that shot. Those arrows are doing nothing now and you're not getting any damage. However, if you wanna spread your damage and not have this overkill happening on every shot you take, the way to go about it is to patrol in with your army in the staggered formation. This way, when they get in range and you wanna also patrol a little bit further away, when you get in range, your units will create this kind of concave where you're very much spread out at max range and shooting at enemy units. And this this way, you're actually going to be spreading your damage across multiple units and reducing the overkill significantly. It actually means that if your opponent patrols in line formation and he stacks up and you do this concave kind of trick, you will win that fight if it's equal resources pretty much 10 out of 10 times because you're reducing overkill. It's that impactful. You might be wondering as well, why does overkill happen when you patrol in line formation? Like what's the difference? The whole point is when you patrol in line formation, how patrol works is that each unit will target the closest enemy unit. So if all your units are stacked in the same two, three tiles, you're going to be targeting the same few units that are closest to those two, three tiles. So even if you have 10 units on one tile, all those units will be shooting the same enemy target that's closest to them. And that is what causes overkill. However, if you spread out the units using this concave tactic, you're going to easily realize that your damage is being very nicely spread and you're going to get amazing trades, whereas your opponents will be landing all kinds of overkill and wasting potential DPS. All right, hopping into number four now, this is gonna be a bit more of a practical tip for the mid game and the early game. And this is gonna be more so before ballistics is researched. So before ballistics is researched in a simplified game where you have like, let's say 15, 20 crossbows or archers or skirms, whatever it may be, fighting against another group of 15, 20 range units, the idea to maximize the efficiency of your trades is twofold. There's two things to keep in mind before and after you take your shot. So the first thing you have to realize before you take your shot is you wanna get in a position where you are as close as possible to the enemy army. And you also wanna target the closest enemy unit to your army. This way, it makes it incredibly hard for your opponent to dodge and create enough distance and enough of an angle to where your shot will not actually land. If you just target a random enemy in the middle of their army that's gonna be like a little bit further away from your army, your opponent will have a lot of time to move out of the way and actually dodge the shots even if your shot will land near the army it's not going to hit anything because it didn't hit its intended targets and if you're too far away chances are you're not going to land shots because it's very easy for your opponent to get out of the way in time this is why we want to move in towards the enemy army take that shot and then right after you take the shot this is the second step you have to move out of the way now probably away to dodge the enemy shot so you want to move to the left or to the right to dodge the enemy shot that we know is going to be coming at us because he's also trying to fight us if you're winning the fight and you're kind of trying to close the distance you basically want to do the same first step so moving close take the shot i get the closest enemy unit but then instead of walking away we walk towards him the reason for this is if he turns around to shoot we'll tank one shot no problem we'll take it we'll eat it and we'll get closer and closer to where we're able to take shots from closer which are impossible to dodge whittling away his army so we put our opponent in a position where if they don't take a shot we're killing units for free one or two and he'll run away and if he does take a shot we can close the gap we'll lose a few units ourselves but we'll continue to take away units from 
from the enemy. And that is the best way to push your advantage in range versus range fights when you're winning. And if you're not winning, like I said, you just shoot at the closest enemy unit and then you dodge to the right or to the left or even away from his army to dodge his retaliation. It takes a lot of practice to do this, but the idea of targeting the closest enemy unit and then dodging right to left is a very, very natural thing that once you get a little bit better at it and once you start practicing it, it's going to start clicking and it's going to become second nature to you in these kind of range versus range fights, which are very common, by the way. All right, I spent a lot of time on the last one, but moving on to number three now, it's gonna be a bit more of a quick tip. Uh, this one is gonna be for melee units, and it's basically the idea of using stand ground to focus a single unit. And where this is helpful is when you have a few scouts and you really wanna single out an enemy spear, and you wanna kill the spear fast because it does a lot of damage to your scouts. You don't want the spear to get many hits. And then after the spear is down, you can start chasing down a few archers or whatnot. So it's a very, very common situation that comes up very often if you're playing as scouts. And the reason why we use stand ground for this is just simply how melee pathing works and how melee fights work. Basically, if I'm on aggressive stance with my scouts and I've got four of them and I'm engaging a spearman and let's say four archers, if I right click the spear with my aggressive scouts, they're gonna try to go attack it. But as soon as one of them starts bumping on the other scouts and can't quite get into the spear, he just goes ahead and targets the archer and he just completely forgets about the spear. This is really bad because sometimes because of like the nature of pathing in this game, it's just how it is. Sometimes you run in only two scouts Scouts get locked onto the spear and then the other two start hitting archers and then the spear just wins the fight versus two scouts and then starts hitting your other scouts and so what should have been a winning fight ends up being a disaster fight simply because you didn't use stand ground. Well how it works with stand ground is that you right click the spear and your scouts will not target other units. They're not going to seek them out. They're only going to focus that spear down unless the other units are within one tile from that scout and then they might deviate but generally speaking with stand ground your units will listen to you a lot more when it comes to singling out one unit at a time. Also, just for a bonus tip at number three, it also helps to use box formation for your scouts or for your melee units in general when you have them in low numbers. So three, four, five units, definitely use box formation. It keeps them tighter together and it makes it a lot easier to maneuver with them. All right, moving on to number two now. This is a very interesting tip and one that isn't used as often as it should be used. However, it's been popularized a lot by someone like Leary who likes to do it. And a lot of top players look to try and do this as well when they can. It's basically called making some runner units. That's what I'm gonna call it. And it's used for late game trades, whether it's range versus range or melee range versus melee range, whatever the case may be, just big late game battles in general. The way it works is if you have your range army in you know a certain line attacking the enemy units and your enemy also has range units firing back at you what you want to do is grab a few units it could be anything cavalry melee range any units put them on no attack stance and patrol them in front of your range units by just one tile so one tile in front of your range units and patrol them on one tile really small back and forth and don't do anything else they just move back and forth and soak arrow fire how does this work why is this a good thing why do we want to soak enemy arrow fire well the first thing and we've already established this since these units are going to be one tile in front of your range units they will soak arrow fire from the opponent who's patrolling in because as we've already said in this video patrol will target the closest enemy unit and shoot that unit until that unit dies and then move on to the next one and so by having these units one tile further or one tile closer we soak all the arrow fire and this is where the patrol comes in but patrolling back and forth on a small area like one tile back and forth we actually trick the game and we trick especially ballistics that's what we're tricking basically because <laughs> this is really confusing but i try my best to explain it you're changing our trajectory so often in a short period of time that as the arrows are being launched from the enemy, a lot of them will miss and will shoot in the direction where our unit should have been traveling when the arrow was released. But since we're patrolling back and forth, our trajectory will change and so the arrow will completely miss. And this will happen on a large scale. A lot of the enemy arrows will just simply miss because our trajectory is, like I said, constantly changing. And the result of this is simply fascinating. You're gonna soak up hundreds of arrows for just a few units that would otherwise die to like 20 or 30 arrows. And it just gives you so much extra HP or extra tankiness to your army since a lot of your enemy DPS is landing completely void. It's a really tough concept to explain but hopefully with the visuals you would have grasped the concept and you're going to be able to implement it in your own games. And just to recap this tip because it's super important it's really easy to do this trick just patrol in with your army then grab two or three units it could be a Hussar it could be any kind of unit that you don't care about and just put them on no attack stance patrol them in front of your range units and let it go crazy. The results will be fascinating. 
All right, before I show you guys number one, as I always like to do in these top five videos, I've got a honorable mention. Uh, for this one, it's going to be a very simple tip. Basically, you wanna look at your mini map to know when you will need to fight. All these army control tips are really cool, but if you're not looking at the actual fight, you're not gonna be able to use them properly. So the big thing that I wanna emphasize is that you need to look at your mini map while you're macroing at home, while you're doing your economy. Keep an eye on that thing to know as soon as you see enemy units on that mini map or up here, you wanna go ahead and look and then try to control your army to be able to implement these tips in the first place. So it can be tricky to control both army and economy at the same time, but part of being a good player is knowing how to balance those things and using the minimap is a great way to help do so. Another honorable mention, come check me out on Twitch because you're gonna learn a lot of new things by watching me play tons of games pretty much daily on there. So definitely check me out on Twitch, link in description. Moving on now to number one, we've got my favorite tip here that a lot of people do know, but I think enough people don't that it's worth mentioning. And this is stand ground into aggressive patrol for melee units. I'm gonna also add a bonus tip and show you guys how to engage range units when you have melee units. This is just gonna be how to take engagements with melee units. So when it's melee versus melee, how you wanna do it is run in with your cavalry or your infantry or whatnot with stand ground. You stand ground and you patrol into the enemy. As soon as you get within range where your first few units are starting to clash with the enemy, you change that patrol into aggressive. And this is the most insane way to take engagements with melee units. How it works is your units will clump together because of stand ground, and you're gonna get really close to the enemy before switching to aggressive and then letting the back line find its target. This makes it that the first few will stack really tightly and be able to kill a couple targets of the enemy because we're not gonna break formation too early on. The difference between this is that if you're on aggressive patrol and you're just patrolling from far, as soon as your melee units get within range of the enemy melee units, they start to break formation, they start to bump on each other, and they start running in pretty much like one at a time in complete chaos. If you keep them in stand ground, like I said, they keep the formation a lot more tight, and you're gonna be easily able to like one shot a couple enemy units right away. And if it's an evenly matched fight, if you kill a couple units from your enemy before he's able to kill a couple of yours, it tends to snowball in a melee engagement. I don't wanna say that this tip will always win you engagements that are evenly matched, because at the end of the day, patrol is pretty random when it comes to melee versus melee because of weird paths things. So sometimes you will lose, but this is the best way to ensure consistency in your fight. Stand ground, patrol in, and then switch to aggressive stance. And this gives you the best results consistently across the board. Okay. And now for the second kind of bonus tip for this number one, it's basically how to patrol into a range units when you're playing as a melee unit. So if you've got like a cavalry unit or an infantry and you're running into an arbalest mass or any kind of range units, let's be honest, it's tough to engage them sometimes because they're not going to run at us. They're a range unit. They're going to control the game. They're going to wait in a certain area that benefits them. We need to take the fight to them most of the time, but it's tricky because if you just run at them, they've got eight tiles, eight range usually, that they're gonna be shooting at us that we can't even hit them because we're not in range yet because we're a melee unit. So the way to close those eight tiles without taking the most amount of losses or with reducing the amount of losses we take is by spamming the split and line formation as we run in. How this works is once again, we're gonna trick ballistics, which is by the way, the most dumb technology getting tricked left and right. But we're gonna trick ballistics by once again, changing our trajectory very quickly and very very often. The way this works is you're just gonna run at the enemy range units, spam split and line formation. So you're closing the gap since you're running at them, but you're also changing your trajectory constantly. So you dodge a lot of the incoming arrow fire. As soon as you get up close, you can just go ahead and patrol into them and take the fight as you normally would. But this time we took less damage as we ran at them instead of just losing three, four, five units before the fight even starts. All right, that's gonna do it for this top five video. I usually do it a lot more lighthearted than this and cover some very basic stuff. But in this video, I really went into the nitty gritty because I wanna give you guys the best tips and the best tricks that I know and not kind of hide anything and prevent you guys from having all the knowledge. So I'm really trying to help you guys as best as I can. And I really hope that it benefits you and that it's easy to digest uh, or as easy as possible to digest. Let me know if you've had any questions about this video and if there's any tip that you didn't quite understand. I'll try my best to read the comments and answer and help each other out in the comments by the way if you guys understood a certain tip better than someone else help them out answer their questions and let's create this environment where we're all trying to help each other improve because at the end of the day that's what it's all about with age of empires 2 we're all trying to have fun and play the game at the highest level that we possibly can and yeah that's gonna be it for this video guys let me know what you guys thought and i'll see you guys in the next one peace